great things, and I believe that he's gonna do it tonight. Uh, we are starting a new series called Victorious. Uh, somebody say Victorious. Victorious. And in this series, we're learning how to leave our life of defeat and how to enter into our life of victory. And we're gonna be pulling um, through this series in 1 Corinthians 15, 57 through 58, it says, but thanks be to God. Is anybody thankful for God? Thanks be to God who gave us the victory. Somebody say victory. Who gave us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It says we have victory through Christ. We have so many pathetic Christians that still walk around defeated. That even though we have been given victory, they still live as if they're a part of the world. That, that there is availability to have victory, that, that we don't fight for victory, that we actually fight from victory. That whenever you're believing and you're trying to get pure and you're, you're trying to live a, a holy life and, and you're trying to strive for it, and man, I just wanna do better, I wanna, you know that you fight from victory, that you don't fight for victory, that we don't have to, we don't have to put, in, put on a, a, a strength, that we have been given strength through Jesus, that we have been give, given the victory through Jesus. And tonight we're going to be pulling from John 8 and we're going to be learning from a scripture um, that is probably one of the most traumatic scriptures for a Bible character uh, throughout the whole Bible. Like this is one of the most traumatic things uh, that you're about to see. And sometimes we can read scripture and, uh, and because we're not in it, we don't really understand um, the fullness of what's actually happening. Um, but I don't know if you're like this with movies. Whenever I watch movies, I become the character. That whenever they're, they're walking and something's happening, like I feel what they're feeling. Um, that's what you need to do with the Bible. When, when you're reading the Bible, you need to insert yourself and become the characters. That, that what's happening to them is happening to you. That you can begin to relate yourself with what God's doing uh, in them, in, the, in that scripture. So so John 8, verse 2, it says, At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teacher of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? See, this is what they're doing. Now, what do you say? They're trying to now put Jesus in a predicament. They were using this to question him, to trap him, in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When, uh, with his finger. When they kept questioning he strained up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. That's bad of Jesus. He said, hey, if, you, if you've never sinned, go ahead and throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The oldest ones first until Jesus was left with the woman standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, said, uh, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful for what you're doing. Uh, we're grateful that we can step into victory. And maybe there's many of us who have lived uh, defeated, lived broken. And I just pray that there is a, a new season that we're stepping in tonight, that, that even as we're reading scripture and hearing the word of God, that our minds will be open, that our hearts will be open, and that you will teach us how to live a victorious life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. In, the, in this text, uh, we find... A woman. They, the, the scripture doesn't give us the name of this woman. It doesn't give us a background of this woman. 
It doesn't tell us if she's married or has kids or it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give us much about this woman. We don't know her occupation, but what we do know is probably her worst moment that she's ever had in her entire life. It was a moment that she was caught in the act of adultery. This, this was a moment that it, it, it was probably embarrassing for her. It was probably traumatic for her. She was pulled out in the act of adultery. And we see that this was the, probably the worst moment of her entire life, that, that she was caught. This is what the Bible describes her as, that she was caught in the act of adultery, that she was caught. Um, have you ever been caught before? Uh, maybe, maybe caught doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Uh, have you ever been caught before anybody? Uh, am I the only one? I, I, I've been caught before. Um, can, can I tell you a story uh, about the time um, that I was caught, the time that I was almost arrested? Um, can I tell you that story? Can I tell you that story? Um, I, there, I, was, I was almost caught. And um, as a teenager, uh, me and my buddies and my, my siblings would play uh, a prank. It was called poop in a bag, okay? And uh, what we would do is we would find one of our mom's purses, okay? And, uh, and then what we would do is we would go find some dog poop. Um, and what we would do is we would put that dog poop into the purse. Um, and then we would go around the neighborhood and we would put that purse in the middle of the road. And we would hide behind trees and hide behind bushes. And we would wait for the car to drive by and see an abandoned bag of uh, purse. And, uh, and then they would be curious. They would stop and, uh, wow, there's a purse. Uh, you know, it's Balenciaga. Let me check this out. And they go and they grab this purse and they stick their hand in the purse to figure out who it belongs to. And when they go in, they would grab a handful of Dog dookie, okay? Um, and this was amazing. We would stand and we would hide behind bushes and we would see these cars drive by. They would take this purse, they would grab the doo-doo and then they would throw the purse out of the car. It was awesome. Uh, and we were having a great time for like a few hours. We were, we were having a good time. Like we were laughing. This was exciting. Uh, and, and one of these people who uh, brought the bag into the car, I guess got a little too upset. Uh, and instead of just leaving the bag, they called the popo. <laughs> um, and I'm scared of the popo. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the popo, I, I just, I, you know, and so um, all of a sudden I see coming down the street as a purse is in the street. I see cops driving down. And uh, this was before I was fully saved, okay? Um, I, I, I wasn't fully uh, saved at this point. I didn't fully respect cops. I didn't fully follow the rules. Uh, and so what I did, instead of listening and obeying and waiting for them to come, uh, I do a 180 turn and I book it as fast as I could to go home. And I got away from the cops. I was... <laughs> Don't clap for that. Like, respect the cops and uh, follow the rules. But, but honestly, I, in this situation, was almost caught. Have you ever been caught doing something that you shouldn't have been doing? Uh, maybe caught with that substance. Um, maybe caught on that website. Come on, can I be real? Maybe caught with that girl. Uh, hello. Just trying to see. Caught with that girl. Maybe, maybe you, you were caught in her DMs. And she was talking to, the, to one of your friends, but you, you were feeling it and you just decided to be a little bold and say, hey, are you free tonight? Ha have, you ever been, have, you ever, have you ever been caught before? Um, because honestly, in humanity, we are notorious for doing things that we shouldn't be doing. Um, if we go all the way back to the beginning, in, in, in the first book of the Bible, in Genesis, um, we find this, God created the heavens and the earth. He created, he created the seas, he created the mountain, do you hear me? Do you guys hear me tonight? Uh, do you guys hear me? He, he created the mountains, he, he created the animals, he created Adam out of the dust, he removed the rib out of Adam, and he created the woman, and he said, hey, you guys have dominion over the whole earth. You guys name the animals. You guys make sure you till the ground. You can do all of that, but don't do one thing. 
Don't eat the forbidden fruit. Like you can do all of that, but don't do that. And what we find is Adam and Eve go over and they eat the forbidden fruit. That, that, that humanity were notorious for doing things that we shouldn't do. We, we find this, we find David. Who knows David? David defeated Goliath. He cut that mug head off, bro. Like, like he, was, he was a champion. He was a king of Israel. He defeated armies and he was a ruler. He had everything that anybody would ever want. He had money, he had girls, he had houses, he had everything. But then one day he stayed back from war and he looked over and he saw a woman bathing. <laughs> like, and then he invited her, he slept with her, and then this bro killed this girl's husband. Like, like, like David had everything, but he still did something that he shouldn't have done. And, and all the way now back to John 8, we find this woman. In, in 8.4 it says, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. This woman's struggles that were private were now made public. What would happen if your, public, your private struggles became public? What would happen if what you did around whenever you were by yourself in your room, what if that thing that was private now became public? That this woman had a very private, intimate situation and now all of a sudden it is public. The thing that was meant to stay private turned into a public scandal. It was a horrible situation. She, she was probably embarrassed. She was probably ashamed. And she probably felt defeated. Maybe you're in here tonight and there's been situations that you've dealt with and maybe there's times you felt defeated. Maybe you didn't, you didn't make that team. Maybe you didn't pass that test. Maybe you didn't have victory in that thing that you felt like you would never do again. Maybe you made promises and then all of a sudden you still feel defeated. This woman was in a situation where she felt defeated. And, um, and you know, about, something about me is that uh, I hate to lose. Like losing, it, there's just something about it. It's just like, I hate it. Uh, I, I don't like the feeling of it. I just like to win. Like if I'm gonna play something, like I'm gonna play to win. Uh, have you ever met those people where they're like, it's just a game? <laughs> have you ever met those people? Like, like just have fun. <laughs> like it, it's just a fun game. Or they're, they're like, why are you so serious, bro? I'm like, get off my team right now. Like, like get off my team. Like, I don't want you on my team. I want people on my team that want to win, that want to have victory, that want to defeat the team that we're going to get. Like, like I want to win, <laughs> okay? Like, like, I'm a winner. And, and uh, my, my son Malachi, he's on a soccer team right now. And uh, it's a beginner league. He's four years old. And, um, and they, don't te they don't keep score on this team or in this league. Um, they don't just keep score, it's just play for fun, enjoy your time, and all the parents are just excited about anyone getting a goal, and, uh, and, and they don't take score, but I take score. <laughs> I take score. Like, I'm looking at this, the, the other team, and I'm seeing them score, I'm scouting them out, I'm like, okay, like, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing how many times they're scoring versus how many times we're scoring, and then whenever Kai's on the bench, I'm like, boy, you better get out there, and you better defeat that other team, because we're here to win, and I want to know, in this, in this team, uh, in this game, who is a winner and who is a loser. Like, I am keeping score so that I know who is a winner. And I was looking at this even in Christianity. Do you know if you're winning or losing? Do you know in, in your situation, are you winning or are you losing? Because in this life, we're in a battle. Did you know that? That, that we're in a battle. This isn't just life, let me just figure out, get a house, get married, get kids, and, and just do whatever I wanna do. That this, this life, that we're in a battle that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That the enemy does not want you to serve God. He doesn't want you to come into the house of God. He doesn't want you to lift your hands and worship. He doesn't want you to read your Bible. He doesn't want you to be unpassionate, to see revival in your school. The enemy would rather you be a part of the world. The enemy is here to defeat you. And, and so many, sometimes we don't even know if we're winning or if we're losing. We, we don't know. And um, that's why some, sometimes people come in here and get saved 
and uh, they respond and they get a free Bible on their way out. And then all of a sudden, everything starts to break loose in their life. All of a sudden, it feels like you're, you're getting rejected, your friends are betraying you, uh, everything's falling apart, and, and you gave your life to Jesus, and it's like, why all of a sudden is everything falling apart around me? Has anybody ever felt that before? Like, I'm like, man, I just said yes to Jesus. Shouldn't my life be perfect now? Like, shouldn't I be winning? Can I tell you this? That when you respond and say yes to Jesus, now there's a target on your back. You, did you come to get good news tonight? Uh, because the enemy does not want you to live a life of victory. So if he can convince you after a few weeks of saying yes to him, that you can run away and go back to the world, go back to your addiction, go back to the worldly living, go back to the girl, go back to the friend group, go back to the habits, go back to the depression. If the enemy can convince you to go back to what you left, he won. So are you winning or are you losing? Is it easier for you to go back to your old life or is it easier for you to stand in the house of God? Because the enemy wants you to quit. The enemy doesn't want you to step into the freedom that you have. So are you winning in your life? What battles are you facing? What, what is it that whenever you go home, what is it that you deal with? How's your purity? How's your purity? How, how's, how's your anger issue? When you're playing the video games, are you crashing out? <laughs> are you crashing out? Got shot in the head and all of a sudden you're like losing your mind. I should have won. Crashing out. <laughs> How's your identity? Are you secure with the body that you're in? Or do you look at yourself and say, I'm the ugliest person I've ever seen? How's your identity? Are you uncomfortable with the body that God gave you and now you're trying to become someone else and something else because now you're, you're confused? Are you winning your battle? Are you following into the doctrine of the world or are you understanding who God has called you to be? Are you winning your battle? Because I love that you came in and you raised your hand for salvation, but did you know that there is more than to be saved in this life that we're living? That, that this life isn't just so that we can say yes to Jesus and then one day go to heaven and then live in eternity with Jesus. No, we have this life and there's a purpose in this life and this life should be a life where we defeat the enemy and we see victory in our cities and in our families and in our friend groups. We should see victory. And victory is available. The Pharisees in John 8 were quick quick to accuse a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. They pulled her out and they stood her in front of Jesus. They were quick to accuse the woman. Have you ever met someone who's quick to accuse somebody else? Have you seen what Josie did? <laughs> Have you seen what Billy did last night? Did, did you see it on Instagram? Somebody, you're, you're talking and all of a sudden you're pointing out all the things that other people are doing. These Pharisees brought a woman who is caught in adultery and they were quick to accuse her. They were quick to put her in front of judgment. And we gotta be careful being around people who are quick to judge. Because sometimes the people who are judging the most are dealing with the most in private. They're hating on everybody else they're calling out other people's sin and other people's problems while at the same time, they're suffering on the inside. We gotta be careful to surround ourselves with people who are quick to judge. In John 8, seven through nine, it says, when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to him, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground, at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older one first, until only Jesus was with her and the woman standing there. And in this scripture, we find that these Pharisees brought this woman to accuse her. And Jesus now is down 
drawing in the sand. Now, we don't, we don't know what he's drawing. We don't know what he's doing. Uh, this is what I like to imagine is, I don't know how many there were. There's probably a dozen. Uh, I like to imagine him just putting the date of their worst sin. <laughs> just, hey, hey, Pharisee, do you remember when you did this? Are you without sin? Hey, hey do you remember when you, when you did this? Are, are you without sin? And then all of a sudden they realize that they're, they're also sinful men and that they had judgment on them and that, that, that they began to walk away because they were full of sin. And sometimes people are quick to judge. And this woman was standing in front of Jesus. And you know what I love about this is that Jesus didn't hate her. Jesus didn't reject her. Jesus didn't talk down on her. You know what Jesus did? Jesus protected her. And sometimes we come into church and we can view God as this God who hates us, who rejects us, who, do, who wants nothing to do with us. We're scared to even enter into a relationship with them because we're afraid of what he'll say about us. But Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus protected her. And instead of experiencing hatred and judgment from Jesus, this is what this woman experienced. Here's number one. She experienced grace. She experienced grace. This is so powerful. In John 10, it says, or John 8, 10, it says, uh, Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said, then neither do I condemn you. So this is what he's saying, is that I have grace for you. Did you know that Jesus has grace for your worst sin? Did you know that no matter what you do, no matter your worst sin in your past, and no matter what you will do for the rest of your life, is more powerful and will separate you from the grace of God. That, that your sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. That when Jesus came down and he died on the cross and he spilt his blood for our sins and he rose from the dead, he gave us grace so that no matter what we do and ever will do, that the grace of God will cover all of us. That is good news. Your sin does not separate you from the goodness of God. No matter how bad your sin is, no matter how bad your sin will be, his grace is enough. There is no sin big enough to separate you from God. But she didn't only experience grace, she also experienced victory. He said, neither do I condemn you. But watch this, he says, go now and leave your life of sin. So he didn't just say, hey, I have grace for you, I forgive you. But he also gave her the commandment to leave the life of sin. I'm weary of Christians who come in and give their lives to Jesus and they say the same. That they still text on their phones, that they still talk and distracted during worship, that they still go back to the addiction, that they still do whatever they wanna do. I'm, I, I'm worried of Christians who are saved by grace but never step into freedom. Have you stepped into victory? Have you defeated that battle that you've been facing your entire life? Have you stepped into the thing that God has? Because he said, go leave your life of sin. So how, how do you leave your life of sin? Let me just give you a few things and we're ending. I'm gonna give you practical and then we're gonna step into some spiritual, okay? So how do you live, leave your life of sin? How do you leave your life of sin? Number one, we need to destroy the source of sin. Destroy the source. You need to throw away that vape. Young people, listen to me. This vaping thing is out of control. You're doing it in private, you're doing it in secret, you're going into the bathrooms, you're buying it from dealers. You need to throw away the source. The vaping thing is out of control. You need to delete, you need to delete certain apps. You need to, you need to block her on Instagram and Snapchat. Somebody needs to hear that. You need to block her, bro. <laughs> like, like block her. <laughs> You need to block him. He keeps sliding in, girl. You free tonight? Somebody say, block him. <laughs> Destroy that source. Because you're so attached to that source, 
you keep going back to the sin. Somebody, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. Because you're still attached to that source, you, you go back to sin. And we're worried to give fully our lives to Jesus because we like the way that source makes me feel. I like those drugs. I like those pills. I like that girl. I like the way that makes me feel. I like that website. You need to destroy the source because it's keeping you defeated. It's keeping you down. What area has God given you victory in that you're keeping the source of the world and you're, you're allowing yourself to stay defeated? We need to destroy the source. Here's number two, we need to replace the source. Sometimes things will make us feel joyful or happy for a moment. We will feel good going to that girl or we'll feel good going to that source and we will feel excited and happy. Do you know that nothing will satisfy you as much as the presence of God? Somebody doesn't believe that. <laughs> I said that, that went right over your head. That you've been going to that source, you've been going to that person, you've been going to that substance, but can I tell you the truth? That nothing will satisfy you more than the presence of God. You need to read your Bible. You need to be in His presence. You need to pray. You need to listen to worship music. You need to replace the source. We are being taught by rap music and entertainment. We are being taught by the Kardashians and by, I don't even know who you guys look at anymore. Who is it? Uh, who are people that you guys like follow? Anybody? Anybody? You guys are you guys are embarrassed to say it. You're like, I don't even, I don't even want to say that. Like, like I follow Travis Scott. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna crash out at his concert. Crash out at his concert. How about you lift your hands in the presence of God and say yes to Jesus instead of following the ways of this world? Like We need to replace the source, man. Like your Spotify, your Spotify playlist, bro. Like, like if I if I looked right now at the last ten things that you searched, God, would I know that you are saved? <laughs> you're you're listening. You're being taught by entertainment. You're being taught by Spotify. What have you replaced your source with? Have you read your Bible? Have you prayed to God? Have you taken your spiritual life serious? Are you replacing the source or are you staying connected to what the world had never satisfied you with? It's surprising how satisfied we are with quick fixes. Oh, it's so interesting. I'm gonna go to this because I'm depressed right now and I just wanna feel a little happy. It, it's surprising to me. Actually, it's not surprising to me because honestly, I dealt with this for over a decade where I was addicted and I was going to things. And even though I was in the house of God, it still seemed like I was going back to my old life. I was addicted, man. But then one day I decided I'm sick of dealing with quick fixes and false sources. I'm here now to go to the true source, to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the one who can truly satisfy, to the one who can strengthen me and build me up, the one who can give me the faith to face my enemy, the one who can give me the power to defeat the enemy. I went to the true source and I finally stepped into victory. Have you stepped into victory? What source do you need to leave and how can you replace it? And this, this is the last thing. He said, go and sin no more. It wasn't, don't go sin for next, the next few weeks. It wasn't, hey, just go unfollow those Instagram accounts and then go follow them in a few weeks. It wasn't, throw away your vape and let me go back and get it in a few weeks. It wasn't, let me throw away these substances and go back and get it in a few weeks and break up with this girl and go back to her in a few weeks. He didn't say, hey, go for a moment. He said, go and sin no more. So if you wanna live a life of victory, this is what I'm gonna to declare to you, never 
go back. Never go back to that thing. Never go back to that source. Never go back to that addiction. Never go back to that enemy. Never go back to that place because God wants you to live in victory. Never go back. Because when we go back, we go back to defeat. But when we stay in God, we live in victory. If everybody wants to stand up with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. God is so good. And you know God is real. <laughs> that this isn't just something that we're doing to play around and just have a cool concert. That this is, this is real. That I've experienced it. Has anybody ever experienced freedom, the goodness of God and victory in your life? Like, like this thing is, this thing is real. And I believe even tonight that even sometimes the first steps to truly step into victory is having an experience with God. This is, this is really what happened with me, is that I had all these things, but then I was like, I'm taking this thing serious. And I had an experience with him. He called me higher. He called me to better things. And this woman, she had an experience with God. She had an experience with them. And it's amazing that she was covered by grace and she was encouraged to step into victory. And I believe tonight that you are covered by grace. Is anybody grateful for that? We are covered by grace. You don't have to earn his love. You don't have to earn his acceptance. You don't have to earn it that you are covered by grace. But now, 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 it's time to step into victory. It's time to step in. I, I believe even tonight that there's people who you have substances on you. Someone's like, did he see my pocket whenever I came in? Did he see that thing sticking out? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I smelt it too. <laughs> Y'all are like, is he serious? <laughs> uh, some of you have it on you. Some of it is in your phone. And tonight is your opportunity to leave it. And I, I, I know I'm talking about big things like substances and, and relationships, but sometimes it's a mindset. Sometimes you, you got to leave that insecurity at the altar. Sometimes you got you to gotta leave the way that you view yourself at the altar. That, that what is it that's inside of you that is holding you back from stepping into victory? What is it that you need to leave? Maybe, it, maybe it's a friendship. <laughs> Don't tap your neighbor. Come on now. <laughs> I talk to people all the time that even... They come into the house of God and they want to do better, but then they have friends that keep pulling them back into the world. How about this? How about instead of them pulling you into the world, how about you pull them into the house of God? How about that? How about that? How about, how about you be a leader instead of you following their lead? How about you get them to follow your lead and say yes to Jesus and to be passionate about your faith? How about that? Like, like I'm just, uh, like, Christian sometimes, man. Like, you know, you know, like, like Christians. Somebody just say, like, Christians. Like, like, what's wrong with Christians sometimes, bro? Like, like, why are we so whack? Like, why are we so like, oh, I want to be like the world. You know what the Bible says? That you're not of this world. That you have been rescued from the dominion of this world. And now you have authority over darkness, hell, and you're not supposed to be like the world. You know, I, I fit in better when I dress and talk and act like the world. You know what? You're not supposed to fit in with the world. You're supposed to influence the world and make the world say yes to Jesus. 
So, so here's the thing. We can't influence the world when we look and act and have all the same addictions and habits as the world. You know what will cause the world to follow Jesus? When they actually see that Jesus has power to change lives, to change mindsets, to change habits, that when there is a great testimony, people will be like, man, I need to follow that God. So is there anybody who wants to leave their things, leave their sources, leave their habits, leave their addictions, leave their impurity? When we do that, God's gonna do something great. So every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, Lord. Nobody looking around.